This segment is being brought to you by Stan Sloan Zora Bait Company, where setting the hook is an everyday thing. All right, this week's Peach of the Week is being brought to you by Flowers Deer Processing. Let me tell you something. Those people are so busy. I have never. They, they've been sending me pictures of what's been going on out there to process the plant. Oh, my gosh. We're going to have a great year for harvesting on deer. I'm going to tell you. Hey, this week, uh, the first picture and the second picture here, this is some young sportsmen that I wanted to show you. These guys are uh, over there at Flowers Deer Processing. They're checking in their, their deer. This is from the youth hunt just the other day that we had. And look at the these kids. They just, such big smiles on their face. Uh, uh, we'll show you some more next week. We wanted to spread these kids' pictures out just a little bit, but my goodness, what, what a jewel to have a, a child out there with big smiles on their face, their biggest bucks ever. Our, our third picture here, this is uh, Bubba Crutcher, good friend of mine, Bubba Crutcher. Uh, works for uh, First Tennessee Bank, by the way, if you want any banking needs, you can go check out Bubba. But this is his first bow kill, and man, he's happy. He, I know Bubba personally, he's uh, Joy's cousin, and uh, I know him personally. Uh, he's a, one of those guys that just gets tickled all over. I mean, it goes all the way from the toes up. So uh, he's just a great, great guy. And this is Bobby Gannon. And he said, Hugh, I killed this one in Van Buren County on November the 11th. It's my first nice buck I've ever taken. And he said, check out this, Hugh. I'm still smiling. All right, that's some great deals right there. Just some great pictures. Maybe get you in the mood to go deer hunting this weekend. You can send your pictures to us here at Southern Woods and Waters, 474 James Robinson Parkway, Nashville, Tennessee, 37219, or simply email them to me at hugh at southernwoodsandwaters.com. We'll get them on there really, really fast. Lots of deer pictures coming in. Keep them coming. I'll tell you something else, too. We got a few guys that are hardcore fishermen. Man, they're sending in some fish that you just would I got I, some over eight pounders are being caught at Lake Gunnersville right now. Yeah. Uh, that place just keeps putting the fish up there, doesn't it? I mean, it's just full of them. But we're going to help you tonight. I hope you've went and got that pen and paper while we had the break because we're going to help you tonight. What I want you to pay special attention to, not only... You've heard this all the time, match the hatch, match the hatch, match the hatch. Well, guys, it's it's easy to match a thread fin shad or, or a gizzard shad or, or a, a bluegill or a pumpkin seed. It's easy to match those because they, they vary in sizes all the way through the water system. But now crayfish, you got to get a little specific on this stuff. There's a time to use a small finesse jig, time to use a hair jig, and then there's time to use a big mop jig. But you better have the colors right mm -hmm. because we know as well as anybody and you guys too fish are finicky when it comes they want that that special one that they've been feeding on and this is a great opportunity for you to be able to take notes and our camera guy she's going to keep it on us we're going to make some real close-ups now guys let's start off with what are the three do you, you said you got a couple of the ones that are the imposters the invasives the invasives mm -hmm. uh can you show me some of those, Bart and Carl? And, sure, and let's right. see what they look like. Uh, and then that way we know what we're looking at as far as, as knowing the difference between. And by the way, can, can anybody out here in our viewing audience, Bart, be able to uh, look at a website or something and know what is available in Tennessee, what Tennessee normally has, and what is uh, an invasive well, we're we're working on that. Carl's actually working on a, a website for us right now that that will have photographs of of all the species. Because he's got bunches of photographs. He has bunches, of <laughs> photographs, and they're very good. They are. Right. Well, but, Carl, what is that one there? That is. Well, this, that looks like a Nashville crayfish. Well, this it's is a, this is an, is an invasive species, and it's called the Kentucky River crayfish. Okay. And it's uh, native to the Ohio River system. Can you system. hold him real still there? And, and I can. They're going to take a look at him right there. Okay. Oh, sort of buddy. Got his claws pulled in there, but but this now, one has green a green as a gourd. Uh, it's green and it it has a distinctive rusty color here on the side of the abdomen. Yeah. And that's sort of characteristic of that species and helps in determining what species. This is the have. Kentucky. The Kentucky River crayfish, and 
uh, it's impacting uh, the native crayfish in East Tennessee. Uh, we have a pretty bad uh, infestation of them in the Holston River and the Clinch River and Nolichucky River systems. Okay. And uh, it, it displaces some of the natives like the surgeon crayfish. Okay. And, uh, this You talked a while ago about some crayfish being more aggressive than other species. That's pretty aggressive. This is real aggressive and it's real adaptive to a lot of different so he can it. take over just about anywhere. He can. It's one of the few species that can actually inhabit the, the man-made lakes like Cherokee Lake and Norse Lake. It right, can live right. in the lake. Man, that is that is a big crawfish right it, there. It's mm -hmm. a pretty big crayfish. I mean, a smallmouth eats him. He, he, might, he might go a few hours without eating <laughs> <That's> again. <right. laughs> pretty good meal. Huh? That's well, that's neat because that does now look a lot like that Nashville crayfish mm -hmm. that we saw. Right. So... Uh, one of the now we don't have a natural crayfish with us tonight, but I was noticing. Uh, can you pull another one out? Let, show them what you're talking about, Carl. When you talk about the saddle, you only, you talk in the film about the saddle and the colorations on the saddle. Right. Uh, let our viewers know what you're talking about. About. Uh, well, I'll get one out here that has a really distinct saddle. Okay. In fact. Its common name is the saddle crayfish. The saddle crayfish. And uh, this is uh, really common here Hold in Middle real Tennessee. Still. They're going to they're take a picture of him. And okay. you can see it has a horseshoe shape, shaped saddle on the uh, carapace here that starts and comes around the back of the carapace and then back down the other side. Now is it that its natural colors right there? Is it uh, a little light tan, a little green, a little black? Yeah, that's pretty typical of the way they look in the Duck River system. Now this yeah. is a Duck River system crayfish. This is, mm -hmm. right. And so uh, all those four and five pounders we catch on Duck River, that, that's one of their favorite little meals yeah. right there. Yeah, if you could uh, if you could match that with an artificial lure, you, you would be very well, effective. Well, I think I, I, I can hear the wheels are turning out there now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that one, he's even got a little orange on, the, on his tips there, mm -hmm. too, yep. Carl. Uh, a lot of species uh, in the genus Orchidectes, and uh, a lot of those have the orange tips. They'll have a black submarginal band and then an orange terminal tip. Very, very much on the tip. Right. And his antennae is, is kind of orange or reddish orange in color, too. They are. And this, that varies, too, as to how... Uh, close they are to the molt stage okay because crayfish their skeletons are on the outside right so as they grow they have to uh, molt out of that shell and grow a new one so when they first molt they'll be really brightly colored now what do you mean by brightly colored like that one right there the duck river what is he go what kind of colors is he well be? this uh, part that you see here that's tan would yeah. be even lighter colored and okay. a greater contrast between that and the saddle when is their molting they molt four times a year is that right well it just depends when they're young they molt really often as they grow and then when they become mature then they'll only molt twice a year okay that's typically. right that's right that's right uh, uh, usually that's in the spring and fall spring and fall so mm -hmm. they're going through a molt right now yeah these molted probably about a month or six weeks ago okay because we we're having a full moon this weekend what do you think that's gonna then really through molting for the fall season aren't they they? Are, yeah okay so we can go with a little bit darker colors now uh, if we're fishing for them? Yeah, from now all the way through the winter and until the spring, until they molt again, they'll get darker as time goes by. And they'll, a, they'll become less distinctive, the color patterns. Boy, on. I hope you people, buy our viewers are out there writing <laughs> this stuff down. That is valuable information right there. What about the next one? What about, just just pick out some and just talk to us about it. And we're saving Big Boy for last, okay? Okay. okay. <laughs> Well, let's talk a little bit more about some of the ones that, that you might, you know, uh, fish with or try to yeah, match yeah, yeah, for yeah. bait. Uh, we talked about the Duck River form of the saddle crayfish. You bet. Now, this is the Cumberland River form, and it, as you can see, it's less distinctive. The, All right, the saddle. That, we're going to hold that real still for him. Oh, he's, he's got a little attitude, too. Yeah. He'd like to get Let me go. <laughs> now he's a little he's a little darker than the Duck River one. A little darker and less contrast between the saddle and the, the regular background body color. Okay, and what do you mean by contrast? You mean the the 
the colors aren't changing a whole lot? Well, I just mean the difference in color between the saddle and the back the abdomen. Color. Yeah. Okay. Kind of so, all runs together. He looks like yeah, yeah. He's a little more he's drab. Little. He's a lot like an olive drab color. Yeah. And uh, you and I even made the statement on film that uh, they look like they were part of the army yeah. <laughs> because they're all <laughs> olive drab. Yeah, they do. Yeah. The ones that live in the streams are typically uh, camouflage. You know, mm -hmm. they tend to try to mimic the substrate in the stream. You know, like if it's a gravel cobble. They'll try to look like that if there's a lot of uh, bedrock and things. You know, they'll try. So to they, do they adapt to the color? Or they have they got some part of a chameleon type? Not, not. It's a genetic thing. It's a genetic yeah. thing. Okay, okay. Right. All right. And the ones that uh, there are some species. There are about 15 species in the state that live in burrows. Right. And and, and, and we talked about that. Uh, right. Matter of fact, we caught one. Remember, right. we, we set, caught one. Set the we trap set the trap and, and caught mm -hmm. one and. and uh, uh, there is a difference between burrowing uh, crayfish and waterborne, or what I call that stay in the water all the time. Right. Well, these uh, the ones that live in the stream we call a pigeon crayfish, and then uh, say that again. The, now, the a, ones that live in a stream, a pigeon. That just means they live in the surface water. Okay. And uh, the the burrowing species, uh, for whatever reason, they tend to be the most spectacular in color. They can be, uh, some of them are just uh, cobalt blue, some are uh, UT orange. Really? Yeah. And, so Tennessee and really is number one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for, for whatever reason, they're the ones that seem to have the most bright, brightest and brilliant colors. Well, that is amazing. I'll tell you what, we got to go right now and do our products of the week, but don't leave, ladies and gentlemen. We still got more crayfish to show than uh, Carter's got liver pills. So uh, I'll hurry back. Uh, we're going to go right now, though, and do our tip of the week. Southern Wood.